And uh, I saw this quote on Facebook, and it's in your notes. Uh, it says, the worst battle I ever fought was between what I knew and what I felt. Now, when I read that, it took me maybe one or two times more to, to uh, understand what that meant. But read it again. The worst battle I ever fought was between what I knew and what I felt. Because most of us, most of us in here today, hopefully all of us, uh, know what the Bible says. You know, we, if you've been here long enough, we've, we've uh, preached a lot of truth, and, uh, uh, but, but we know, but, but a lot of times that we'll, stuff will come into our life and information or whatever and cause us to question what we know and that's what I, what we know and what I felt. And uh, I'm going to talk about that, about our soul this morning. And what, what exactly is our soul? Well, you, why is that important? Well, that, that's what I ask God. Well, why is this important? Well, it's important to God. And if it's important to God, then it must be important to us too. So I would just want to, and there's, believe me, there's a lot of different ways as I thought about this the last couple of weeks, there's a lot of different ways we could travel down this road about the, the meaning or what is our soul. Now, a lot of people, and you can get this from Scripture, don't get me wrong, that our soul is what gets born again when we get saved. But that's not true. And we're going to look a little bit about that this morning. What is our soul? Uh, do our feelings, uh, our emotions play a part in the battle of our soul? It, it really does. It really does. Um, uh, and a lot of times, I don't know about you, but for me, a lot of times, when I read um, like Ephesians 6.12, it says, well, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, and that whole. But it seems like, doesn't it, does to me, like we're in a wrestling match. Amen? Between our emotions and our feelings, and everything that goes on in our life, and it seems like a lot of that's a wrestling match, back and forth. Um, not that feelings or emotions are a bad thing. We don't, we don't get saved from our feelings and our emotions. Uh, that's part of our soul, our soulish realm. Um, not that there are bad things, but, but a lot of times, a lot of times they can be a barometer, a barometer, uh, um, of, of, of things going on around us, it's like uh, it's like Margie's knee when it's going to rain. Anybody? Come on, you know what I mean. It's like or something, some other part of your body. Uh, it's a barometer for what what's going to happen. A lot of times, that our soul senses things or knows things that that we need to deal with. Um, uh, uh, some um, some people are emotional, uh, some, uh, some are not. Some people wear their emotions on their sleeves. Some people uh, shove their emotions down inside of them. Um, uh, some internalize them. Neither one is wrong. It's not like, well, you're wrong and I'm right. There's no wrong and right here. Um, but uh, what we know to be true is the important thing instead of just going by our feeling. Well, this is what I feel today. Well, that, there's nothing wrong with your feelings, but, but what does the Bible say? What are, what are we supposed to go by? Are we supposed to set our life by what we think, what we feel, what uh, different things uh, that we're, we're going to look at today? But, uh, but what, what about this, this thing with our soul? What are we supposed to do with the stuff in our soul. Let's start, if you're in 1 Peter chapter 2, I think that's the first thing underlined, right? 1 Peter chapter 2, and if it's underlined, that's where we're going to go to next. If it's not underlined, uh, then, then I'll be reading it. 1 Peter chapter 2, and we're going to end up in Romans 12, I think that's underlined. But let's start at 1 Peter chapter 2, and this is one of those, those wow verses for me. Look at it. First, this is in the New King James. It says, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. It says, Beloved, I beg you, 
And I, I have read some other versions which are really interesting, and you might have a different version, but it says, Beloved, I beg you, as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. So first of all, you know, which way could we go in this little thing today about our soul? Well, yeah, you know which way by reading that about our fleshly lusts, about the things of our flesh that the Apostle Paul talks a lot about to the church of Galatia. Amen? About the flesh and the spirit and, and how it wars against each other. And, you know, but he says, what does it say which wars against our soul? And I tried to find a version that wouldn't use the word war. And other than even the Passion Translation uses the word war. Now, I've said this before. I'm not big on the word war. Well, we're in a war. We're in a war against the devil. And that's, that's not true. We're, we're not in a war against the devil. A war is something to determine an outcome. Amen? Like the First World War. It was a war to determine right from wrong. And there was an intended outcome. Our, the war with the devil is over. Amen? The war with the devil is over. We're, we're not fighting the devil to win a war. Jesus Christ won the war at Calvary. Amen? Amen? His blood was enough. One drop of his blood was enough to win the war. Amen? From the, between good and evil. Between the devil and and us, if you want to put it that way. So the war is over. We, the, the, the war, uh, we go through, if you, if you want to call it battles, whatever you want to call it in your life, skirmishes, uh, wrestling matches. I like to look at it as wrestling matches. Uh, but, uh, and um, if, if you know anything about Rick Renner, he, he talks a lot about this, uh, 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 about... Ephesians 6.12 and what the wrestling is all about. And it is really about hand-to-hand -hand combat, as, as if you understand all that, what, what he tries to tell us. But, but it really is about hand-to-hand -hand combat. And, and, but the Apostle Peter here says that which, it's wars against our soul. And I guess if we're going to use the word war, we can look at it as, look, if, if you're not going to win the war against your soul, you're going to have a pretty rough life. Because a lot of our life is lived, yeah, through our spirit, man. We're, when we get born again, our spirit is, becomes new inside of us. Amen. Uh, it's, it's created in true righteousness and holiness, the whole thing that Ephesians says. But if we have to win the battle or the war for our soul. And we're going to look a little bit about how to do that, what our soul is, what our soul is. And this is, I don't know if I put this in your notes, but our soul, our soul is the seat of emotions, desires, feelings, passions, appetites, and thoughts. I just, I've just found that somewhere this week and it's so good. Let me read it again. Our soul is the seat of our emotions, our desires, our feelings, our passions, our appetites, and our thoughts. And then I thought, well, no wonder it's a battle because we all battle. I don't, there's not a person in, don't look at me like you're with this doctor, you, what you used to say, you're pious Pete or saintly Susan. There's, there's none of that in here. So we all battle against these, these, uh, these emotions, these desires, these, these fleshly lusts, as Peter, Peter says, of our soul that, that, that the devil brings in and shoots these, the Bible says, fiery darts, amen, that a lot of times get in, whether you want to believe it or not, you know, unless you put on the full armor of God, amen, and believe that, that God is your rear guard, the Bible says. But uh, we, we, have, we are in a battle for our souls. Because really, when you think about our thoughts alone, our thoughts dictate our, our fleshly response. Amen? Amen. Our thoughts dictate our fleshly response to, to all these that I just mentioned, and more. But our, our thoughts dictate how we walk and talk and think throughout the day. If we have if we have angry thoughts, 
If we have angry thoughts, we tend to act out in anger. Amen? You know, it's no secret that when I was little, I I had an anger problem. And I had a, a bit of a rage problem. I mean, one day I was... 20 years old, and um, um, something made me mad. And so I took the wooden bat I was using for batting practice, slammed it over the plate and broke it in half and threw the other half in the stands. Were you there that day? I don't think you were there that day. Uh, (laughs) Maybe she didn't want to be. Anyhow, I had that kind of problem. I'm not, you know, I just... um, but if we, if we have angry thoughts, we tend to act out in, fl- in our flesh in an angry way. Well, a couple of you, maybe me and a couple of you. But, but anyhow, if we have sad thoughts, we cry. Especially you women. What the world? What the world's that all about? If we have fearful thoughts, you know, we, we, uh, we have fearful actions that hold us back from doing things or from stepping out in God. Because why? We have these, these thoughts that tell us, what are you, crazy? What, you want to buy a 31-acre farm with no money for $121,000? What are you, crazy? So those fearful thoughts went through my mind, probably not Marge and Peg and Rob. They're so much more spiritual than me. But, but uh, <laughs> now they all thought the same. What are you, crazy? <laughs> but when you know it's God... You know, when you know it's God, you do what God tells you to do. Uh, because, listen, when we were born, when we were born, not born again, when we were born, our soul ran our life. Because, why? We didn't have a regenerated spirit, the whole thing. But our soul was in charge of our life. Amen? We, we went by what we felt. and We just grew up. We went by what we felt. And because we didn't, so a lot of times we didn't know any different. Amen? So, and like, you know, like my grandsons, you know, they have a, they, they don't know any different. That's why they have to be taught. And sometimes, anyhow, I won't go there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Come on. We were so when we were born, we our soul was in our was in charge throughout our life. And you wonder, well, why did you get in trouble so much as a kid? Well, my soul was in charge, and my spirit. Was, was not regenerated yet. But when we got saved, when we got born again, we got a new spirit, amen, that we got a new spirit, and then our spirit said, okay, I'm in charge now. I'm in charge, you can just, soul, you can just rest in me, and how many of you know that doesn't happen? That yeah, we get saved, we get born again, and what Jesus talked about, you know, you must be born again and born from above and new spirit and all that other stuff. Yeah, we get a new spirit, but our mind, our soul are, is, is not re, re, uh, generated, re, uh, uh, what we're going to look at later. Um, but our, our, our soul says, well, not so fast here. I, I like what I was doing. Like when I got saved, you know, I, you all know my story. When I got saved, everybody thought, wow, it's going to be a different life now. Tim's saved and Everything's going to be a bread, bed of roses, but, but my soul was saying, well, gee, the guys are going to Potter County this weekend. I might as well go too. And naturally, I went along and did what they did. And, and then God spoke to me. You know the whole, whole story. But, but my spirit, my spirit was saying, no, 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 no. I mean, if you do something wrong and you, you, your spirit said, no, 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 don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. Or the Word pops up inside of you. That's why we need to read the Word, because so the Word can pop up inside of us and say, yeah, but this is what, this is what God's will is. So, so we, have to, we have to run things in our mind and our soul through the Word of God and let the Spirit of God to direct our life. Amen? Our soul had its own thoughts that our flesh wanted to, to act out in. Amen? And that still happens today. Amen? You can shake your head. That's true. Our flesh still wants to act out today as it did before because why? Our, our, soul, our soul is saying, well, you did it before. Or the devil's saying, nah, come on, just a little bit. Just a little bit won't hurt. You can do that. Come on, just a little bit won't hurt. And so we, instead of saying, shut up, devil. 
or shut up mine, I'm doing what the Spirit of God wants me to do, we give in and all of a sudden we're in this place, wow, how did I get here? Or how, why did I do that? What the world is this all about? Instead of saying, nope, nope, I'm not doing that because my spirit man is going to be in charge of my life. But we're going to look at something that, um, how do we transition, how do we transition from our soul to our spirit? How do we transition? How do we do that? How do we do that? Well, I'm not exactly sure. Okay, I'm just, I don't know everything. I'm just, maybe you think I do, but I don't. But how do we transition from our soul to our spirit? I think the Word tells us, amen? That's why we, we tell everybody, what kind of church are you? Well, you know what? We're a Word church as led by the Holy Spirit. Now, I really got that look one day. What the world does that mean? Oh, obviously, I didn't say that. Obviously, you don't go to a Word church like ours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you for laughing because that, that is pretty funny. Uh, I didn't really do that. But how do we transition from our soul to our spirit? Well, we're going to get there. But First Thessalonians 5.23, you're so close. Why don't we go there? It's a little bit to your left. It's right before 2 Timothy. What's before 2 Timothy? 1 Timothy. There you go. It's right before 1 Timothy. Well, it's not, is it? What's before... Oh well. It's before Second Thessalonians. Look at First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-three. We have actually we have talked about this before. It's been a while. It's been years since we talked about our spirit, our soul, and our body. First Timoth First Thessalonians five twenty-three. It says, "Now may the God of peace Himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body." be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, real quick, what does God want to do with our spirit, soul, and body? He wants to, he wants to um, preserve it blameless. In other words, He wants to make it perfect. And I guarantee you, when we take our last breath here on earth, the next breath is going to be in heaven, we're going to be perfect. We're going to be perfect. But I believe, I believe that God wants to do that here on earth. I believe that He's already made our spirit perfect. Our spirit man is perfect. We've talked about that a lot. But He says, make our soul and our body be preserved blameless. I, I believe, this is just me, I know, no, it's, not a lot of other, it's a lot of other people, that I believe we're supposed to go to heaven whole. You can shake your head or you can raise your head. I believe but we're supposed to go to... Or do people go to heaven whole? No, they don't. We just lost a brother that went to heaven pretty sick. But I don't, I don't believe... I don't believe, and I'm just going to say it, I don't believe that God wants us sick. According to the Word of God, I don't believe it's, that's God's will. Do people go to heaven sick? All the time, every day. Every day. But I don't believe that's God's will. And here he says that our whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he mentions here we're, we're, a, we're a man of three, we're a person of three dimensions our spirit, our soul, and our body. And part of our soul, and we talked about this before, is our what? Our mind, our will, and emotions. Amen? Part of our soul is our mind, our will, and and emotions. And I sought the Lord on this Tuesday. Actually, Tuesday, I was sitting in the quiet and I'm thinking, this is my thought, okay? God, what the will are you doing here? I don't understand this. I, you know, I don't understand a lot of things that God tells me to do, but, but he, he spoke to me, and I know He spoke to me because sometimes God, He, he, he says and does things in a crazy way. So this is what I, I, I started writing after I said, God, Okay, how do you want me to do this? Should I go this direction? Should I go that direction? Should we talk about our, our flesh and our lusts? And should I really hammer the people? And should I, or what should I do? And here's what he said. He said, uh, our soul, I know you're going to laugh, so just go ahead. Our soul is like an air traffic controller. You see how God has a sense of humor? And I thank you for not laughing at that. 
but our soul is like a, an air traffic controller. Think about it. Now, we all know what the job of an air traffic controller is. Sits in this tower up there, and he directs airplanes. When, what a great job to have, amen? Directing airplanes in through the sky. Hey, go this way and go that way, and watch them zigzag through the sky. But no, he doesn't do that. But, but he, watches, he watches the screens. He watches incoming and outgoing traffic. He, uh, he, um, uh, he, watches, he watches so there's no accidents. And he watches so, so everybody gets to where they're supposed to be in a safe way. Amen? Uh, I, I read somewhere where it's the, it's the most stressful job in America is the job of an air traffic controller. Um, it's the most stressful job in, in America. So the Lord started speaking to me about this thing about being our soul was like this air traffic controller because he has to what? Always be on guard. He can't say, well, you know what? I'm going out to take a smoke break for five minutes. They'll be okay while I go, and but he can't do that. Amen. He can't do that. So um, our our soul. This is how God compared our soul, our mind, will, and emotions is uh, uh, is like that air traffic controller. He ta we it takes in a lot of information. Think about it for a minute. Our mind, our soul takes in um, information all day long through our conversations. Uh, what we see, what we hear, uh, what we talk about. All day long, our mind is processing this information and it's supposed to, it's supposed to uh, give out uh, or make us, or have us do things that will not cause conflict, not cause damage, not cause crashes, but our soul takes in... The, the, somebody said our mind is like a computer. And, and whatever we put into it is what is going to come out. Amen? Our soul is like that air, uh, it directs our thoughts, our emotions, our desires, our feelings, our, even our flesh. Our, because uh, what we think about usually ends up what we do and what we say. Amen? What we do and what we say. We can look at it. We can look at our soul as a filter. We can look at our soul as a filter. It can go in, and our, our soul says, is that what should be going out? Now, we all know people. We all know people that don't have a filter. <laughs> we all know, we, and we say, man, that guy don't have a filter at all, he does it. He just, he just says whatever he thinks. Come on, can I just go, wow, that guy don't have a filter. He just says whatever he thinks. In other words... What goes, what's going in to our five ports isn't being filtered and what comes out of it is sometimes very, very wrong. Amen? I'm, I'm glad you yous aren't like that. I'm so glad you're perfect and aren't like that. But it happens. Um, but you ever meet somebody who, who has no filter? Uh, that's, why, that's why scriptures like Philippians 4.8 is so important. Amen? Amen? And we all know what Philippians 4.8 says, right? No, obviously not. Let's look at it. I know it's not under line, and, and I have uh, three hours, so, so we're going to look at Philippians 4.8 just for a minute. No, I'm not. It's not really three hours. It's two and a half. Anyhow, uh, Philippians 4.8. Look at, you should know this. Margie said, Tim, you shouldn't be saying that. You should know this. I'm your pastor. You should know these scriptures. Philippians 4.8, it says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So that's why it's so important that these scriptures... Are, are, are part of our lives. So when this, when this input comes into our minds and, and uh, our, our filter says, no, Tim, remember what that scripture says? And, and that's why we need to have a, what does uh, Pastor Steve say? We need to have a pre-scripture. Oh, I know why he said that. Instead of a prescription, we need a pre-scripture. Anyhow, but we need to have a scripture in us. What does David said? I'll hide your word in my heart 
that I not sin against you. But, uh, but it's so important that these scriptures are in us so we can think about these as we're taking in all this garbage in our mind and our souls are saying, are going, gee, 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 and all these wires shooting off and electrical stuff going off. And, uh, um, but we, we, can, we give our souls help by knowing what the Bible says, amen? By knowing what Scripture says. Um, uh, we, can, we, can, uh, we can just know about the Scriptures and not walk in the Scriptures, or we can walk in the Scriptures and know they're right. Um, uh, uh, what, what if, let's, let's go this direction, what if our, our soul our mind, our will, and emotions would say, I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to listen to the Bible. I'm not going to listen to my spirit. You may be born again, but you say, I'm not going to listen. I'm just going to do whatever I want. I'm going to let my flesh run wild, and, um, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to do it. I'm, I'm holding on my own ways. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'll go to church, but, you know, that's it. I'm just going to do what I want to do. Um, and, well, we'll see how, where that gets you in life. But anyhow, what would happen? What would happen if we would go to church? What would happen if we would read the Bible every day? Because um, um, the Apostle Paul met these people all the time. The church of Corinth, if you understand why his letter to the Corinthians was so important, was they were a bunch of carnal Christians. They were a bunch of carnal Christians. First uh, Corinthians three one through three talks about that. Um, he talks about that. You're, you're nothing but carnal Christians. And I came here to to um, impart this gift to you. I impart. I came here to give this spiritual manna to you. And he said, "You're just like babes." That's what he called them. You're babes. So you say, "Well, that that person can't be born again because of what he's doing." Well, you know what? That, that's not true. He could be a babe and not uh, just not doing what the Bible says to do. Amen? So the Apostle Paul ran into these people, but, uh, and he was talking to Christians, but he said, you're just carnal Christians. You know? I, can't, I can't talk to you as, as spiritual people. I, I just can't do that. And, uh, but what if we would allow the Word and the Spirit to win the battle? What would happen to our soul? I think we would be... Number one, a much nicer person, uh, and we, would, we wouldn't allow things to go through our filter that aren't supposed to go through our filter. And uh, I saw this example, come on up, Sheena. I saw this example about three weeks ago. Uh, how many of you know who Steve Furtick is? Well, you should. You all, you all know who Steve Furtick is. And this is the example, and it's like, man, that is so good. Okay, here we go. So these are um, these bags are full of stuff that goes through our soul. No, you got to stand here. You're not done yet. These things and turn the other way. These things are stuff that we hold on to. No, this way. Face me. God have mercy. Uh, these things are uh, is full of stuff that we hold on. Our soul holds on to our emotions, our 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 anger, maybe our feelings, or or maybe stuff that we, we need to let go of. You know, people say, well, just let go and let God. Well, well that's easy for you to say. Yeah. Amen? But um, we need to, to have something to take the place of the, this baggage that's in our life. Amen? So we, we have this, what's a, what the Bible, it's called the sure word of prophecy. And what if, what do we do? What do we do with this, this baggage that's in our life? And we all have it. Don't, don't, pious Pete's and Saint. I love that saying. I'll never forget that. He said that that day. But um, what do we do with this stuff that's in our life that, that we like? I mean, no, I really like doing this. You know, I don't know about you, but before I got born again, I, I was a good sinner. And, <laughs> My wife, yeah, God have mercy. It's amazing he's not dead yet. But anyhow, um, what was I going to say? Oh, I know what I was going to say. But, you know, we, we hold on to this baggage in our life, 
And what do we do? We have, we have this that, that can help our soul be rejuvenated, be renewed. We're going to look about like this a little bit later, but, but what do we do? We, we replace this drop that, with this. With that. Now what happens to the baggage? It's replaced by the Word of God. Okay, well, it was, maybe it was just for me. But that made so much sense. Thank you, I appreciate that. Sorry about that. But, but we have all this stuff in our life, this, what you want to call baggage, whatever we like to hold on to, sin. I know you, you're perfect people, I know, but... But what do we do we, when we get the Word of God in us? The more the Word we get in us, amen? It's like the Apostle Paul said to Galatians about the flesh and the Spirit. The more the Spirit we get in us, the less our flesh should take charge of our life. That, that's the truth. I'm not just making a statement. But so what we need to do is let the Spirit run our soul. Well, how do we do that? I'm not exactly sure, but I know what the Bible says. So let's look at what the Bible says in, in Romans chapter 12. Are you there? You probably are way before me. You're so good. That's why I underline them. Um, we have got to take control of our input so our output is glorifying to God. Does that make sense? We have got to control our input so our output is glorifying to God. And Romans 12, 2 is just one short, small example of how we do that, isn't it? We all know the script. We've talked about this before, and I question God on this. Are you sure you want me to go there? Why, didn't we already talk about that? But anyhow, this is where we're going this morning. Romans 12, 2, let's look at that a little bit. It says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So this is a very familiar scripture. If you're not familiar with this scripture, you really need to be. But our, our soul, our mind, will, and emotions from the, from the time we were born has been what? Conformed, has been molded, has been shaped, by what? By the world and the people that we were brought up by. Amen? Whether our families are Christians or they went to church, they didn't go to church. My, my parents didn't go to church. You know, they, they had the four of us line up in a church one day and the man came in and sprinkled my head with... I had no idea what I was doing. But, you know, it, it, we're conformed by the world. We're conformed by who we hang around with. You know, I, I was heartbroken when Larry McCreary moved out of York. I just had to get that out. He was my best friend. And then I really met, today I miss Larry McCreary. Anyhow, okay, I'll keep going. Um, because, but are we, we molded and shaped by the world, by, even by the news? Amen. Even by the news we watch, we're molded and shaped by all this stuff. That's why, um, that's why some new believers, new Christians, struggle with Christianity. Because the world, CNN, CNBC, Fox News, tells them one thing, and the Bible, oh, I went to church, and man, that's not what the Bible says. That's not what I'm supposed to believe. That's not how I'm supposed to. Why does that guy talk like that? Maybe that's just me. But, but we're shaped to pattern ourselves after the pattern of other people, of the world, uh, you know, people we grow up with, friends, relatives, mothers, fathers, whatever. You know, we're, we're molded and shaped. Um, uh, listen to what the Passion says about the first part. It says, stop imitating the opinions on, and ideals of the culture around you. See, the culture says you know what, it's okay to do that. It, it's okay to do that. And we all know examples that I could give. We, it's okay to do that. But the Bible says, but, but that's, that was for then, that's not for now. But we, we, uh, 
we're molded and shaped to believe that's okay. We don't want to hear what the Bible says because we might get convicted. Or we might know what the Bible says and are convicted and do it anyhow because that's what this person said or that person said. But that's not what your pastor says or the Bible says. So we get, we get molded and shaped by opinions, ideals, and the culture around us. News outlets can, can shape our thoughts and our opinions. Amen? I just uh, I, I read this, but I saw it before I read it. Uh, a certain news outlet that I really like is now taking their opinions from um, people that promote witchcraft, horoscopes, psychics, crystals. It's Fox News. They're promoting, well, we're going to have this, this, uh, this psychic on and, and see what he says about, oh, really? Click. <laughs> Come on. We've got to watch what these eyes see and what these ears hear, hear and, you know, the whole, the whole nine yards. So uh, we have to be careful, you know, who we allow to, to mold and shape our life. We have to allow the word, doesn't say, and says, but be transformed, how? By the renewing of our mind, amen? By the renewing of our mind. So transformation doesn't start by how we look on the outside. Transformation starts what? By what we are on the inside, amen? What we are on the inside. It's the opposite word of remember in 2 Corinthians, it says Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. That's a different word in the Greek. And this transform means transform from the inside out. You know, it doesn't matter what you look like. You know, how you might dress nice and you might look like uh, Pious Pete or whatever, or Saintly Susan, but... But what you are on the inside is what God sees and what other people will eventually see. You might be able to put on a good show and you might put on that face and that mask and whatever, but what you are on the inside is eventually going to come out. Amen? What you are on the inside is um, um, what you are. So we need to be transformed. And, and how is that? Well, we just read that by the renewing of our mind, amen. We have to get our give our souls something to feed on. We well, say, well, that's that's for your spirit man. Why would we want to give our spirit? Now, spirit man's perfect. We need to give our souls soul food. That's pretty good, isn't it? We need to give our souls soul, and this is soul food right here, amen. Well, transformation doesn't come by occasional practice, does it? Well, if I read my Bible once a week, that's good enough. Well, maybe for you it's good enough, but what, I don't know what good that's going to do you. But, but we, need, um, we need to make a, a, a transformation a habit. We need to read our Bible as a habit. I know some people have bad habits. Some people have good habits. But we need to make our reading of the Word a habit, a good habit. Amen? Uh, your flesh might not like it. Your soul might not like it at first, but your spirit man is saying, yeah, feed me, feed me. I, wanna, I want you to know more. So we need to, to, change, to change our habits. We need to change our thoughts, don't we? To change our habits, we need to change our thoughts. And how are we going to change our thoughts? By, but by good food going into that. Amen? By good food going into that. So we need to change our habits of what goes in to our minds. Amen? We need to renew our minds. God told Joshua to read, meditate, and do. To read, meditate, and do. To read, meditate, and And if you can keep that in mind, not only do I have to read this, but to meditate on it. And the word meditate does mean to mumble to yourself. To mumble to yourself. So we need to, uh, because I think I, that's because when we speak, our, our mind has to shut up and listen to what we're saying. Amen? Our mind has to shut up and listen to what we're saying. So we need to read, meditate, and then do what the Bible says. Amen? Wouldn't that make sense? Why well, just read about it if we're not going to do it? So we need to read, meditate, and do. So we'll, we'll come to a point 
I believe, will come to a point in our life where we'll read the word and we'll just think that's good. And if we, but if we become a doer of the word, we'll know it's good. Amen. How many of you read scriptures that didn't make any sense, so you just passed them by? But when you read them again and, and all of a sudden you start doing what it says, it, it makes sense and, and you think, man, that's really good. Now I know it's truth. We can, we can think it's truth, but when we do it, we know it's, we know it's truth. Listen to what uh, the Passion says. I love what the Passion Bible says at the end of Romans 12. Verse 2, listen to what it says, as soon as I find it, somewhere in this book. Listen to what it says, the second part of Romans 12, verse 2. It says, but be inwardly transformed. But be, in, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. So, so we need to, to be transformed on the inside, not on the outside, amen? Um, Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life, amen? My words are spirit and they are life. We have to allow these words of life to go into us so we know how to live our life. Let's go to one more scripture, Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Look at this scripture, talking about the Word of God and what it does. What does it do? Hebrews 12, 4, verse 12. It says, For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, piercing to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Let me give you my interpretation. And let the Word of God go into the very depths of our soul, the very depth of our life, and cut away all that keeps our spirit man from being in charge. Did you hear that? And let the word of God go into the very depths of our life or our soul and cut away all that keeps our spirit man from being in charge. Because what? Our soul is very important. Uh, we don't hear a lot about that because a lot of people think, you know, well, our soul gets, gets born again. Well, that, that's just not true. Our soul needs to be, what, regenerated. Our soul needs to be fed soul food. So the spirit has something to work with when we need help. Our soul is a filter for, our, for everything in our life, what we say, what we do, how we think. So we, we need to believe that, that God, yeah, God has the best for us, and he does. And a lot of what we know comes from this word. How can we know what God has for us unless we know what the Word says? Amen? So our soul is very important. It's the seed of our emotions, our feelings, our angers, everything, our thoughts. And we need to feed our soul good food. Amen? And Romans 12.2, I challenge you to look at that again, tells us how to do that. Amen? Amen. Okay, that's it. That's all God gave me. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that that you're concerned. You're concerned about our soul. You're concerned about our mind, our will, and our emotions. And Lord, we need to allow our spirit man to run our life. That's very, very evident by what Paul says to the Galatians and other places. But Father, that's so important to renew our mind, to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Father, I pray that, that we would do that as a body and as an individual in the body of Christ. We would renew our mind so we would know your will, so we would have the power to know your will, to walk uprightly and do the right things and not be molded and shaped by what the world says, by what the culture says is right. Father, we need to know we need to know what is right in your eyes 
and according to your word. Father, help us. Holy Spirit, help us to know and to do the right things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Have a great week and be Jesus to somebody this week. Allow your spirit man to be in charge this week. Amen, amen.